Okay, hey everyone, it's Mike from Orderflows, and this is the Orderflows Trader Weekly Group Training from Monday, September 17, 2018. Again, I apologize uh, with the technical difficulties we had in the room, and I, I'm recording this after the session. Um, I, I did do a, a live session, but without the actual uh, screen share. But um, before I begin, a brief disclaimer, this presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. It should not be considered a solicitation to buy or sell a futures contract or make any other type of investment decision. Futures trading contains substantial risk and is not for every investor. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so... Um, there was a few things I wanted to talk about, but uh, I mean, the main thing that I wanted to talk about in in the room, in the training was, you know, taking trades in context of the market as to what's happening in the market. You know, um, you know, no, no matter how you analyze the market, you're going to get buy signals, you're going to get sell signals. However, you know, don't just take them blindly. You know, try to put everything what's happening in the market in context, right? If you're taking a buy signal after a big rally, you got to be asking yourself, I mean, how much more is there to that rally? Just as, you know, if the market has a big sell off, then, oh, you got a sell signal. Um, you know, how much left is, I mean, can the market keep going lower? Of course it can. But, you know, at some point, the market's going to start bottoming out and then start reversing. So, you know, what, what do I mean by taking trades in context? Okay, for example, right, a lot of people that use order flow look for stacked imbalances, right? That's this green area up here at the top. You know, it's uh, three or more imbalances stacked on top of each other. Now, you know, is this a trade I'd be looking to take? No, not at this point. You know, we just had this nice big rally up from um, the low here at, you know, 74, you know, 47, whatever that was. And we rally up um, all the way up to 71.20. Okay, so you know you're talking about a 75 cent move, and then you get a stack buying imbalance. Okay, think about what's happening in the market. Okay, you just had a 70 cent rally in the crude off the low, and you're 70 cents higher. Okay, what does that mean? You know, you're going to have people coming in late to the party. You know, in the old days, used to, in the old days, in in the past, you used to say, well, it's the the retail people that have finally you know got to the phone and and placed their orders with their broker to get long, and you know that's the cause of the stacked imbalance but you know probably not in this case you know it's it's not a very deep rich stacked imbalance you know on the way up you have you know near stacked imbalances you got a lot of bars with three three imbalances in them and then you get the stacked imbalance now you know what i mean you know take it in context right you just had a 70 cents move you get a, a buying signal i'm not looking to buy after a move of 75 cents in fact i'd be thinking of the opposite i'd probably be looking for a reason to sell now i'm not saying we just had a 75 cent move okay now it's time to sell no if something's happening in the order flow then i'd be looking potentially to get short i mean i do see some signs up here with these prominent point of controls these bars with the fuchsia colors in there but i definitely wouldn't be looking to get long up here at that area now, you know, the, the other thing that's unique to my software is, you know, we highlight the multiple imbalances in a bar, right? So a stacked imbalance is three or more imbalances stacked on top of each other. You see here, seven against zero, 23 against one, 18 against zero. Yeah, that's a stacked imbalance, but there are bars that have three imbalances in them that are not stacked. Here you got zero against 75, uh, 39 against 168, three against 39. Now, this is your low down here, the low of the day. I know because it's, I got a divergence signal here. Um, I can see this green uh, triangle there. So I know that's the low, okay? And what do I get as we're starting to move off the low? Well, first I got a divergence off the low. Then as we start moving higher, I see multiple imbalances coming in here, okay? To me, that's a good sign, right? I want to be seeing aggressive buying coming in off the low rather than after a 75 cent move up, then, oh, aggressive buying coming in, I got to get long. Where would you rather be getting long? You know, down here at 70.70 or up here at 71.25. You know, you're going to want to be getting long down here closer to the low rather than up here near the high. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, when I say take things in context of the market, look at what's happening in the market just as, you know, if a market is going sideways. Okay, let's just scroll forward here to uh, some sideways activity. Okay, here, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So this market, it's, we're kind of stuck in a range from about, you know, six in the morning here 
We're looking to low around 70, 70, a high up here around 70, 95, so about a 25 cent move. Right in the middle of that move, around here at 70, 80, 283, you get a multiple stack, uh, stack selling imbalance, right? You got 58 against 12, 29 against 0, 50 against 4 right in the middle of that congestion do you think it's going to be very effective you know it chances are it's not just as earlier just as we we're coming out of this you know even you know I, I should let me step it back a little bit here even in here right we're in this um you know we hit our high here at 71.88 then it just went sideways now here right we get this nice stack buying and balance as you know we're, we're coming out through the high after we had been sitting here since 3:30 until almost 6 30. <coughs> excuse me i gotta get a drink of water okay so we're, we're in this area right we hit a high at you know 3 30 and then we just went sideways until six o'clock 6 30. so for the last three hours we've been going sideways now we got a stack buying and balance okay now if you're a breakout trader would you take that trade yeah probably because you're thinking Okay, we're, we're making a new high here. We got, uh, you know, stacked imbalance. We got aggressive buyers coming in. That's very, uh, very bullish. Now, I, I got to admit, I, I used to be a big uh, guy on breakout trading. Knowing that that was very early on. That was one of my uh, main ways of trading was trading breakouts to new highs or new lows. Now, did you make a new high in the next bar? Yeah, you did by, what is that, about four ticks. So technically, yeah, the broke, breakout worked, but then it came right back in. And then just started going sideways. Did make a new high up here to uh, 97, and then just reverted back in and continued going sideways. So you know, would I be interested in taking this trade? Probably not, because I said it's it's we've been trading sideways for three hours. You know, you're starting to break out. You know, can we go higher? Yeah, of course we can. We did. Yeah, we went higher by you know about. Uh, eight or nine ticks and then just start going sideways again um you know i'd rather not be looking for reasons to be buying up here at these highs especially if you've just been trading there for the last three hours and going nowhere now you know then coming back to this stack selling imbalance now earlier i said you know take it in context i'd rather be looking for reasons to be selling up in here however since 3 30 in the morning back here until what time is this here eight o'clock almost five hours going nowhere okay I, I I'd be a little bit hesitant to take this maybe if we you know we're starting to come out of this area right the sort of this low of this consolidation move is around 71 or sorry 70 70 we're still right smack dab in the middle of it and then it fails now again that's what I talk about when I say you know take trades in context you could have the best trading signal but if it comes in an area of congestion, it's probably not going to be very effective. So, you know, that's what I mean by taking trades in context. Think about where you are for the day, you know, in the grand scheme of things. All right, so let's just walk it forward a little bit here. So that was that consolidation period. So then you come into the next area here. Again, now here's your high over here at uh, where you have this divergence, right? You got the negative delta and the new high. And you know, the market sells off a little bit and then it comes back up. As you're just below that high, you got a stack buying imbalance. Again, you know, just like earlier, you had this uh, coming into this new high, you had a stack buying imbalance. Now here you got another stack buying imbalance. Now I'll, I'll share something with you. I prefer stack buying imbalances to come immediately after a new high is made, not as you're going into the high. And why is that is because, you know, here you can see, Right, the high is here at 71.12. The buying stack buying and balances ends at 71.11. Up here, you know, this is 71.21, and then you got this nice stack buying and balance. Because what I'm looking for is the breakout to the new high and trigger stops or whatever is back there if there are stops, and then you know build on itself and keep going. Now, you know, this one comes just under that high, so I'm not really interested in that one. You know, this one. You know, it is breaking out through the high, but I I would just like to take this whole piece here, put it just above the high for it to appear, not have it appear, you know, sort of as you're going into the high. You know, when when I was trading for, you know, JP Morgan, you know, I'm not trying to drop names or anything, but um, I used to do this stuff. You know, I used to try and trigger stops. I mean, anybody can trigger a stop, right? All it takes is one contract 
for a, you know whatever stops in the order book to get triggered. I mean, nowadays maybe they got some you know maybe some of these algos are a bit more fancy, like oh it's got to trade a certain amount of quantity before it'll trigger a stop. I remember we were working on setting up that sort of algo at J.P. Morgan, where you know say you know, say you know, like here's the high seventy one twenty two. 21 and I'd put a stop in here at 25 but I would say you know only if it trades you know 25 contracts if it trades one I don't want it just to get in a high tick or an uptick and trigger my stop off so you know I'm sure nowadays it's it's a bit more advanced they've they've probably come up with that technology for it. it's not that complex but um I, I remember we were working on it back in in 20, 2010 mainly for spreads because we still work a lot of spreads and the last thing we want to see is one or two contracts trade, and then we get stopped out on 500 spreads. Now, this stack selling imbalance, I'd be interested in, honestly. It's, you know, we come up here, made new highs, start selling off, stack selling imbalance. You know, we got three bars negative delta. I do like that. Now, I don't like this bar right here with the small delta. What I'd like to see immediately after this is a bar with nice, healthy negative delta, not a small delta. Then here starts coming back. You got the stack buying imbalance, you know, positive delta 55. You actually got a delta surge going on in here. You got 55, 326, 406, stack buying imbalance, and it's back up to the races. We make out to the new high, and you know, it looks like to me this is what a stop looks like getting triggered right in here. And you know, it probably trade what 100, 150, so that's 250, 300. Uh, what is that? Can add now 550. You know, it's probably about close to a thousand contracts traded in here, right in here. And it didn't notice this makes this vacuum. It doesn't even come back to fill it in. That's how you know how strong it is. When you start seeing stack buying imbalances that don't fill it in, it's usually a, a pretty strong move. So then we come up here. Now, again, you know, take it in context, right? Where would you rather be, you know, if you're going to take a stack buying imbalance up here, where you have it up here, or down here, just as you broke out to the new high? You know where you got a reason you got some maybe some stops being triggered in here you haven't pulled back to fill that in because if it was just um you know if it was a, a i'll say a weak move but you know it stops being triggered and probably you know something else in the fundamentals came in 71 and a quarter looks like this level is obviously it's a quarter so it's probably got some you know psychological thing going on in there and then okay so you know we start making this new high and make a new high make a new high then when you get up here Okay, so up here at the new high, you got a nice prominent point of control, this fuchsia color here. But then you start selling off. You got this stack selling imbalance in here right off the high. You know, that's what I like to see. And then the market, you know, starts trading lower, comes up, sort of tests that area where they had the stack selling imbalance. You know, notice how it comes right back up to the cusp of that level, in the bottom of that level, and then continues on down. So, you know, try and take it in context. Again, I, I like stacked imbalances if buying imbalance if we're breaking out after the new highs have been made or the new lows have been made for stack selling imbalance i don't like it as we're coming in there because you know i think it's someone trying to push that market trying to see trying to probe if there's anything up in there um you know there wasn't and you know i said if we're up here near a high and i see a stack selling imbalance coming in i would like it i like this one it just didn't get that that follow-up selling right what you need is the follow-up selling to come inside there and help move the market lower in this case it didn't do that up here you know it would hanging up here at the high you got the negative deltas now the other thing about this high it's quite interesting is as we're coming up into that high notice the deltas you know you got negative 293 here you got minus 237 minus 162 minus 143 you got a small delta of eight minus 117 then you got three bars in here two of which are you know kind of nice strong 183 143 but then this one 66 8 then minus 400 minus 700 you know that's the kiss of death right there as you see this delta getting extremely strong negative up in here and where do you see a negative where do you see a delta number period where the positive or negative anywhere in here not till way back here so all of a sudden now we're seeing the aggressive sellers coming in right as the market is about to tank <clears throat> excuse me so you know if you're getting short somewhere up in here off the stack selling imbalance you know anywhere in here you know call it anywhere between 7140 and 7155 you know we, we trade all the way down 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 below 7100 
you know, and look at this delta. Don't even need to watch price, just watch this delta. Anytime you get positive deltas, it's kind of small. You know, going back here, 66, 25, 54, 53, 22, 42. Negative deltas, minus 200, you know, minus 300, minus 200, minus 200. You get one bar here, positive delta of 421. Okay, fine, fair enough. Doesn't mean this whole move is over. If we start seeing a few bars coming in here with strong positive delta, then I would have second thoughts. But then it just continues. Minus 112, minus 121, minus 199, minus 472, minus 524. Till the market you know comes all the way down here down 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 um down to this area you got a prominent point of control down here even down here you know to me this is this is the end but again um you know this stack buying balance yeah i might be interested i'd be interested i don't say i might you know this is one i'd be interested in it's coming right after this nice swing low You're starting to string together some positive delta in here but then what i would do is got to watch the delta in the next bar if it comes back with the decent strong negative delta i'm not gonna be interested i think it, it will fail and in this case it obviously it does fail and the market just uh, keeps going lower all right so you know there's a question that came up in the room uh dealing with single prints right now on the software if there's a single print in the bar on a green candle it'll color it in green on a red candle it will color it in red if it appears at the top of a of a red candle or the bottom of a of a green candle and again it's 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 not some fancy indicator all it is it's it's a visual thing because for me it's it's important in the order flow in my analysis and it always has been and now the question that came up was what do you do when you start seeing alternating um the opposite was the term that was used uh single prints like here you got green and you got red and then you got green <clears throat> well to me it's more of a sign of a market going sideways rather than you know anything special now where i like to see single prints is at you know if it's a up move i like to see it at the end of an up move like up here you got one um you got the single print i like to see it there just as you know if it was on a move down i would like to see it you know at a swing low or at a swing high now if we're in a move i like to see you know like in this move up you see single print single print single print i like to see it on a move up it just helps confirm to me that there's very little selling occurring at the bottoms of these bars obviously that because you can see the volume right four you know three one you know and even down here four as well um as opposed to like 56 11 you know 22 or 23 um 44 it just tells me that you know there's just not a lot of selling interest appearing down there and that's what i like to see you know on a move up here you know one eight three uh seven one you know it just helps confirm the move to me now again it's not some special fancy indicator it's just something that highlights it to you if you're not using my software you just got to look at it but i'm a visual person i like to um you know i'm looking at a lot of stuff <clears throat> during the day you know i've got my charts open sometimes I'm, I'm busy reading the news you know there's fascinating stuff going on in the world these days and you know you can't keep up with it half the time and so I need something that's a bit visual to me rather than sitting here after to stare at the screen. You know, being able to see something highlighted to that to me is, is worth um, worth the money. You know, like here, right up here, you know, you can get confusing. You're up here at your high. I know this is the high. You got a divergence up here. I got this single print. To me, that's a, that's where I like to see the single prints. I'm not interested in this one here necessarily, this, this two lots, but I'm more interested in up here at the high. And it sort of goes back to what I was talking about earlier with taking things in context right if i see it if i'm looking for a single print at a high i'm looking for a single print near the high you know on on the upside in the sense of you know on a red bar on a bar that's turning down rather than on a green bar up here i mean yeah we couldn't keep going higher but i mean we're hitting these highs you got divergence divergence you know every time we hit a high we come off we hit a high we come off we hit a high we come off um, but if I start seeing a sign up here that hey maybe this move is over, I'm going to be interested in it because I'm already seeing the signs up in here, in these bars up in here. Um, you know, I got the divergence, I got this prominent point of control up in here, I got the single print, and then we start making this move, uh, you know, the small move down. So that's that's how I like to look at single prints. Now again, if I start seeing them alternating, then to me that's more of a sign of a market going sideways. You know, there's, there's different ways in the order flow. 
I can determine if a market is going sideways. And why is that important? It's because if I can determine a market's going sideways, I've got to wait till we get out of this sideways activity, um, you know, before I can catch a move. You know, you're not going to, if you're trading sideways, you're not going to go anywhere and you end up going to get chopped up. So, you know, how I like to see it is, you know, if we're breaking out like here, we got this high, start breaking out, and then we start moving higher, single print, single print, single print. You know, that, that tells me that this move is moving higher. Now, if I were to start seeing, you know, the market pulling back, like if this bar up here had a single print, okay, uh, maybe this move is over. But you know, I'm not seeing any single prints up here. Just as we, we had this rally up here at this high, we got a single print. And then we just sort of going sideways, another single print, another single print. So we're starting to group some single prints up in here as the markets start uh, coming off a little bit. So again, you know, take everything in context of the market with what's happening. That's going to put you in good steed. So that was it. The other stuff was just, uh, if I remember a bit, uh, maintenance, housekeeping stuff. So thanks. And uh, again, it's, uh, I'll try and get this up online for everybody so you guys can watch it and enjoy. Thank you again. Bye-bye.